Hello and welcome to the weekly VM Campos comic book club. I'm your host, VM Campos. This is the series where I review a comic book, new or old, from my collection on the following factors. The cover art, interior art, plot, and enjoyability of the book on a scale of 1 to 5. And then I tell you to get it or shred it. This week, I'm reading Rogue Planet number 1 from Oni Press. A little bit of uh, background info as usual. Um, I actually don't really have much background info to share. This is a brand new series. It's not really tied to anything before. We've got uh, some name creators, but there's nothing like background info that I can give you like other times where I tell you my special connection with a comic book and, and all of that stuff. I guess the only thing I can really say is that if you're not watching my weekly Top Comic Book Picks with VM Campos show on YouTube, you're missing out because I talk about the comic books that are coming soon, comic books that you need to know about, and I mentioned this comic way back at the end of last year, 2019, since comic books come out pretty far in advance from when you first order them. I remember talking about this book a long time ago, back in the old days, the year 2019. Remember those times? The plot sounded interesting. I finally got my hands on one months later, literally. This is actually cover dated for April 2020, but I didn't get my copy until last week as of this podcast, so I'm catching up on this book that I recommended to you like six months ago. I guess the last thing I could say is that this is published by Oni Press, who's been around, what, by now 25 years or so? They started in the late 90s, I think, like 1999 or something. They've been around since the late 90s, I'm, I'm pretty sure. So happy birthday to Oni Press. So yeah, let's talk about the book. Let's start with cover art. I got the regular cover by Andy McDonald and Nick Klein. First of all, I love this cover. It's got all of these tropes that I enjoy. It's got an astronaut. It's got some weird alien creatures. It's got a dead body and beautiful tones, purples and reds and such. So right away we get a very evocative cover. A dead astronaut in its spacesuit, covered with weird tentacles and eyeballs of some weird alien creature. It's just a very stark, powerful background. It's this classic trope of, no matter where you go, in the galaxy there is horror. The logo of the book is really cool. I love the graphic design of it, Rogue Planet. It's uh, slab letters, so very thick font, but very stylized. For example, the R, instead of it simply having that little leg of the R, it, it crosses through the top of the R. And the P as well kind of follows that, but without the extra little leg. The A is it feels like the lambda symbol, the, the Greek letter lambda. And it's very sharp, it's very angular, and the O is just a is just a white circle like of a planet. So I really like this cover art. I give it a five out of five. It's scary, it's well drawn, it's detailed, the logo looks amazing. This really stands out on the comic shelves. Interior art is by Andy McDonald and colored by Nick Filardi. Lettered by Crank. Now, I do have to say that the interior art, I don't think is very much special. It's it's just this modern style that is good, but nothing really stands out about it. Anatomy of the characters is good. Each facial expression is conveyed well. Each character's features are represented accurately. Environments are detailed. This is just like standard fare and nothing wrong with standard or normal. You know, we're all normal, but I don't, nothing really stands out. Panel layout isn't that interesting. It's, there's a couple of pseudo splash pages when the crew sees like this spaceship junkyard and, and another part where this weird creature comes out from it. And, and then there's sort of like staccato panels in rapid succession. There's a great centerfold that looks kind of epic, but I just didn't. I guess now that I think about it, what I like the best is when we get to that centerfold and the subsequent pages result where there's a lot of violence and gore and viscera, I think that's when things really stand out. 
go back to kind of a basic style after that and then the last page I think really is evocative really WTF and the preview of issue number two is another sort of epic cover in the vein of the, the cover here so the cover I think is great the interior art because it has to be the standard length of a comic book is less good it's not bad at all it's just kind of basic art basic modern art good colors safe layouts good anatomy i'm gonna give it a three out of five and this is just to contrast other art that is also published nowadays that is a little bit more daring like more interesting panel layout and color palettes i thought this one was very subdued until we get to that alien encounter again it's not bad art it's not amazing art it's fine it's a three out of five plot this was written by Colin Bunn, very big name in the world of comics. Right off the bat, I have to say, I didn't like the story. It starts off with a very interesting exposition, ritual sacrifice perhaps, on some alien world, worshipping at the altar of some weird alien creature. And then we jump over to our main characters who seem to be like uh, space truckers. I got definitely a big sense that this was like the opening scenes of the original Alien movie, the Ridley Scott movie, because it's a bunch of different characters open waking up from hypersleep. And we're introduced to them, Norris Joel, Captain, Tennyson, Cheryl, Operations Officer, Franco, Nate, Mechanic, etc etc and i lost track of them right away there's a lot of characters that introduced they're all uniquely designed you can tell them all apart but you just lose track of them all in an ensemble type of comic like this going back to alien each character lambert ash ripley they're all memorable visually and character wise i don't get any sense that these characters are are differentiated or, or interesting character wise visually i get uh, that they're different because there's asian characters black characters white characters yeah i get that sort of sense there's a there's an old the older guy with white hair and such so visually there's some differentiation there but personality wise in this first issue i don't see anything and most of them feel pretty unlikable they kind of bicker too much they have these like annoying sort of personalities and is that a bug or a feature? So I, I, I was not a fan of, of the plot, and I thought it also went very slow, extremely decompressed um, comic book in the modern style where it takes seven pages to tell one thing because we have to have these close-ups and just exposition. And I think this uh, suffers from uh, the excesses also of modern comics and that there's a lot of talk, a lot of speech balloons, a lot of exposition. One of the beauties of the comic medium is that it is the melding of text and images in a sequential format. I think a lot of modern comics just rely way too much on the, the text and the imagery is secondary. I found myself on this just jumping from word, word balloon to word balloon and not really stopping to savor what was happening art-wise. Look back at a variety of comics in the past where the art and the text is pretty equal that you want to stop and just marvel at the art coupled with the text. So I think that's the problem of having a superstar writer, Colin Bunn, on your book that you're going to let them run how they want as a writer. And as long as the editor finds all of the spelling mistakes, they probably wouldn't cut the, um, the extraneous sorts of text. For example, there's a part where the alien creature awakens, one guy gets killed, and they put in an arg sound effect and yes sound effects of course are the classics of comics but it would have been a powerful scene just to see this little guy in the clutches of this huge creature with no sound the next panel then is one of those space truckers firing his uh, his weapon at the creature and yelling son of a and then ruck, 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 sound effects again it, the character didn't need to talk i think this would have been a very powerful full page where we've got four panels that all of the text here could have been removed and it could have been better. They just forced in dialogue to all these four panels. The guy getting swept away, he's yelling, arg. The guy shoot, another guy shooting at the creature is yelling, son of a. Another guy gets captured, 
he's um, struggling and we've got the speech balloon mm, and GG and then he's saying no 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 while the tentacle fully wraps around his face this would have been a way more powerful a full page if they just didn't have dialogue so plot uh, I'm gonna give it a two out of five I thought it was extremely slow the characters were not that interesting and on the one hand some of them were unlikable they were not able to be differentiated easily personality wise once they get into their their spacesuits, it's even harder to tell who's who. There's some subtle, like, different colorization in their masks or in their visors, but that's not enough. And um, I thought it was uh, kind of a wasted opportunity issue one. It, it, it has a really interesting first two pages and a really interesting final page, but everything in between I did not enjoy. Which leads us into the enjoyability of the book. I'm going to give it a one and a half out of five. The cover, I loved it. The interior art is okay. The story, not great so far. I'm not sure how many issues this is, but I felt on the first issue it was kind of a waste. I'm getting suckered into issue number two. Uh, cover preview is just a beautiful art of one of these astronauts. They're like kind of their, their face mask is exploding with a variety of tentacles. Again, I think these covers are, are way better than what the interior is happening. Very much more evocative. And if issue number two is as slow and meandering and meaningless as issue number one, I don't know about this series. So enjoyability, one and a half out of five. So lastly, get it or shred it. I hardly ever rate these comics low because I always get comic books that I think are fun and interesting. And I hardly ever tell you to shred it, but I want to tell you to shred it. This comic book was not that great. Art was not that great. Story was not that great. I'm a little bit late to the party, so I don't know if the next issues did well. But you've got an issue number one and you're saddled with the responsibility to hook your your reader so that they keep coming back spending their hard-earned money big names are not going to sell your book once you've got so many other titles to look at contrast this with a book like space writers that book was so good the art the story the characters the everything that when i read it i reread it right away and i hardly ever do that with comics so i can't really recommend rogue planet number one Thanks for listening to the podcast. Don't forget to check out my Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. You'll see the video version of this episode there. You'll also see my various comic book haul videos. There's giveaways. There's the weekly show talking about top comic book picks, cosplay, Magic the Gathering, all that good stuff. Follow for free at Patreon, patreon.com slash vmcampos. If you pledge at $1, you'll unlock exclusive stuff. At the $2 range, I'll actually mail you some comic books in appreciation for pledging. But if you can't at the moment, no worries. Simply follow, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. I really appreciate it. So this week I read Rogue Planet, number one. Published in 2020 by Oni Press. This has been the weekly VM Campus Comic Book Club, and I'll see you next week.